Tastes like strawberries on a summer evening, and it sounds just like a song. I want more berries and that summer feeling. It's so wonderful and warm. Breathe me in, breathe me out.
Stadium for our traditional Monday Night Lights event on a Sunday night in August. I'm April Call from West Virginia University. I am so glad that you are here with us this evening. We have thousands of first time students down on the field. They are gonna be taking part in lots of games, activities, a little trivia. I have several interviews scheduled with university leaders and some other uh, people from all across campus. We'll be tuning in with them this evening. Tonight is really though an opportunity to cap off what has been a wonderful welcome week and a return to our campus here in Morgantown. Amid the pandemic, it has been uh, quite an experience, but it's been a great success so far. Class is now underway. So with all of that in mind, we hope that you'll settle in and stay with us tonight as we get ready for our big event beginning at 8 p.m. Right now, though, I want to go to Jeff Coyle down on the field with some students. I talked a little bit about games and activities, and he's right in the middle of it all. Absolutely, April. It is so exciting down here on the field right now. 
There's so much energy from this freshman class, the class of 2025 finally coming here, their new home, West Virginia University. Now, when they got admitted to the university, they got an opportunity to get this flag right here that we've got. Well, now they have a chance to sign their name to the flag. There's a giant flag down here on the field. It's at the corner, the southeast end zone. Uh, of the stadium right now. If you get a chance, if you're in the stadium right now, come on down, put your name onto the class of 2025 flag, add your name to the legacy here at West Virginia University. You can see right now students are signing it already. Of course, there's plenty going on the rest of the night. And I just want to make sure everybody keeps in mind, there's 120 yards on this field. Y'all go ahead, spread out, take advantage of this entire field out here. We, and, and maybe not right in front of the, uh, in front of the camera, but go ahead, enjoy yourselves tonight. We'll have plenty more action from down here on the field with the 4,500 Mountaineers who are now calling West Virginia University home. April, back up to you. All right, Jeff, thanks so much. And again, use that hashtag 2025 for the class of 2025 here at West Virginia University. I'm thrilled to be joined by the Dean of Students, Corey Ferris. And Corey, it has really been a great welcome week. Uh, the class is now underway. What's it been like to have students more fully back on campus in, in what we more traditionally know as the start of a new semester? Well, thank you, April. You know, for me, we want students on campus, and it was so lonely last year with just a third of our students on, that we'd see regularly. So what struck me this year so much is just being able to see so many smiles and people happy to be together and watching people meet friends and reacquaint themselves with their old friends. What have you been hearing from students and, and from others who are on campus? I know you were right in the middle of move-in and a lot of the other events that have taken place over the last several days. Well, the, the past few days, quite frankly, people have been so happy to be back in the classroom, see their professors, be able to interact with other students face to face and not be not be working through classes on Zoom. What is the expectation from your perspective on the rest of this semester? We are still in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, you and I are wearing masks this evening. We have masks uh, required in our classrooms and laboratory spaces. Uh, so what is the expectation for everyone who's here on campus? Well, first of all, we want to make sure that we have a great classroom experience, and so that's what we're trying to protect. And so the expectation is that, um, that, that if you're not feeling well, that you go to student health or you go get yourself tested. Um, that if you're eligible to take the vaccine if you're not vaccinated. That you wear a mask when you're in crowded situations and around lots of other people um, and when you're inside. Because again, we want to make sure that everyone stays in the classroom and is healthy and we make it through the semester in a great way. You are the Dean of Students, and there are a lot of ways for our students to be involved on campus. Of course, we've talked about all the hours that they spend in the classroom, but there are also a lot of hours they aren't in the classroom. So what is the Office of Student Life all about, and how can students contact you, and, and how can they learn more about what there is for them to do? Well, April, the, uh, as a simple tool that I always uh, uh, think about is there are 168 hours in a week, and if students are in classes 18 hours, it's 150 hours they're outside the classroom. And the, the great student life team that I get to work with support our students outside the classroom, whether it's the residence halls, the student union, WVU Up All Night, our counseling center, um, our, our, our um, Center for Black Culture and Research, our collegiate recovery programs, our clubs and organizations, 500 clubs and organizations, 50 plus club sports. Um, so the team that I work with gets to support our students outside the classroom, student government, so many ways to get involved. Well, Corey, thanks so much for being with us. And if you'd like more information about all the things that Student Life has to offer, be sure to visit the website studentlife.wvu.edu. And we have some guests representing some of those organizations and student activity groups you just mentioned coming up here in just a little bit. Right now, though, let's send it back down to Jeff on the field. Hey, April, another activity that we've got going down here, an opportunity to our, for our students to come onto the field right at midfield on Mountaineer Field, Milan Pushkar Stadium, and get their photo taken with these large letters that spell out, of course, home. For 4,500 freshmen, the incoming class of 2025 will make up uh, the new Mountaineers who will now call West Virginia University their home for these next four years as they go through their time as students here. And they get a chance to, of course, kick it off with the photo here. 
and have a little bit of fun behind me. They're going to get a chance to get a photo here, and you at home can go online to see the photo. We'll have them all uploaded. We have a photographer standing by right now to get them up onto the website. So you'll be able to check them out tomorrow at go.wvu.edu slash MNL21. So come on down here, get your photo taken with the home letters, and look out for these all throughout the school year. We have plenty of different phrases that may be popping up all across campus. April, we'll send it back up to you in the studio. All right, Jeff, thanks so much. And those letters look so neat. I saw so many pictures of students posing with them. It's been great to see those. I'm here with Dr. Carmen Burrell, and among many titles that you have, you're with the Student Support Services for Health on campus. So if students maybe aren't feeling 100%, uh, you're the person they're going to need to turn to on our campus. So tell me a little bit about um, health services for students available on our campus and the role that, that you play as we get a new semester underway with our students, faculty, staff, and visitors. Yes, so our student health clinic is located in the health and education building on the Evansdale campus. We have free parking, it's near the PRT, it's really easily accessible, it's open six days a week, and we're meant to be your family physician when you're away from home. So if you have chronic conditions, asthma, diabetes, allergies, anything that you need seen for, we can take care of that, as well as acute illnesses and injuries. Um, we have x-ray machines, labs, so we can evaluate anything that you need seen for. So I can tell you when I was a student a long time ago, I actually broke my hand when I was a student on campus and I came to the clinic and got lots of great help. So I know it's probably exactly the same today, only more advanced with new technology than it was then. You guys do great work there, but you cover such a wide variety of things. And as uh, I was talking with uh, Dean Ferris, we are still in the midst of a pandemic and there are some additional concerns and considerations and protocols and guidelines that, that we're all following. And you mentioned to me just before we came on this evening that you're now able to offer the Pfizer vaccine through the clinic. Tell me a little bit about that. And if someone is interested in stopping by the clinic for a vaccination, how would they go about that? Yes, so over the past week, um, the health department had pop-up clinics and now student health has the Pfizer vaccine available. So it is available on a drop-in basis six days a week. So rather, even if you need your second vaccine or you're ready to have this series, we do have it available. And also, we've been partnering with the Monongalia County Health Department throughout the pandemic, and there is testing available all this next week at the Student Rec Center. I know that starts at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. You can check out uh, different times at the Return to Campus website, and we'll have updates uh, there as new information becomes available. But Dr. Carmen Burrell, thanks so much for all that you and the staff do to help keep our students and others safe on campus. Thank you. All right, have uh, a great rest of your evening. Enjoy the night. And right now, let's go back down to Jeff on the field. There we go. We had to get the microphone working. So. Let's try this again. A couple of freshmen joined us down here on the field. We have Allison from Maryland, and we have uh, Megan from Virginia. They're going to play a game of Giant Connect Four. So you guys just go ahead, see who can get four first. And come on, freshmen, let's cheer them on. It's getting close. Who's going to get four first? We have one student. Oh. oh, we got four in a row. Who was that who won that one? All right, it was Allison from Maryland. Allison, congratulations. Anybody want to say hi to back home? Uh, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Kylie. Hi, everybody. And, and how about you, Megan? Same thing. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Love you. I bet all the uh, students here want to say hi to all the folks back home. Hope you guys are at home watching, enjoying seeing one of the first events to kick off the freshman year for our Mountaineers. April, back up to you. All right, Jeff, thanks. And I think that that is proof, whether it's a Zoom call or an in-person event, 
Sometimes you can forget to turn that microphone on. It happens to all of us from time to time. I'm here with Chief Phil Scott from the University Police Department. And Phil, what has it been like for you and for the police officers at UPD to see students and visitors and our faculty and staff back on campus? Well, it's been a good experience. And uh, this, this week has been rather busy, uh, but in a good way. We haven't had any major incidents and uh, the officers have been out and about uh, on foot and meeting with as many people as they can and uh, things have gone pretty well. That's the way we like it. Talk a little bit about the role of university police and, and your philosophy and, and the department's philosophy as a campus police department. What's your goal? Well, our goal is safety for the campus community as a whole, uh, whether it be the students, faculty, the staff. Um, that's our main goal, but uh, we have a community policing philosophy and we're this year really ramping up our efforts to be out and be face to face with folks and, and just interact as much as we can. I know you also offer a lot of training, a lot of opportunities for people to learn about how to respond and react in different situations, and you can find a lot of that information at safety.wvu.edu. Uh, you can also learn about the emergency alert system at the university. We have uh, a WVU alert system which can send out text messages and emails and alert when there is an emergency on campus. It also sends out other kinds of information related to safety uh, and that's really important for people to know about and pay attention to isn't it? Absolutely and of course that first tier is the alert and that's when it's an ongoing emergency or a threat immediate threat to our campus and then we have warnings for issues that aren't maybe on going and then we have our community notices as well just to keep people uh, advised of what's going on throughout the community. Well you guys are definitely busy all of the time. I appreciate your time this evening. If you again want more information about university police, its role on campus, and about the resources, the training, and the other opportunities through UPD, you can learn about that as well as other safety resources at safety.wvu.edu. Chief Phil Scott, thanks so much. Thank now you. I want to send it back down to Shauna Johnson who's joining us this evening. She's talking with some students and Phil, she's trying to see how much they know about West Virginia University history. Hi, Shauna. Hi, that's right. These students oh. have been on campus for about a week now, so it's time to test out what they've learned already about West Virginia University. I want to introduce you to Terrell. Terrell, where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. And Jakari, where are you from? Montgomery County, Maryland. And you guys met on how? Uh, Instagram DM uh, about in January, February, somewhere on there. So you have friends when you rolled up into town? Yes, yes, yes. All right, here we go with trivia. Now, a couple of quick notes. There are no prizes, and I'm terrible at keeping score. So it's a very low stakes game of trivia, but let's see what you know, okay? You ready? Your first question. What member of the WVU community is helping lead the ongoing COVID-19 response in West Virginia? You can look on the board there. A, President Gordon Gee. B, Provost Marianne Reed. C, Dr. Clay Marsh, or D, Mountaineer head football coach Neil Brown? Uh, Jakari. Uh, B. B is wrong. Oh. Terrell. C. Dr. Clay Marsh. Correct answer, one point for you. Oh. Vice President and Executive Dean of oh. Health Sciences at West Virginia University, also the state coronavirus czar. Second question, we are standing now on Mountaineer Field at Milan Pushkar Stadium. This is the second Mountaineer Field. Where was Mountaineer Field originally located? A, the current tower site. B, in front of Evansdale Crossing. C, next to Borman Hall. D, near Woodburn Hall. D, Woodburn Hall. You are correct. Oh, Two. We have. <laughs> you got the he got the right answer oh. last question you can redeem yourself we'll give you some extra points you can still win are you ready your final question what was the cost of tuition for a term of 13 weeks when west virginia university first opened in 1867 a eight dollars b five hundred dollars c 72 dollars or d nothing there was no cost to attend wvu jakari 
B. That's wrong, man. <laughs> What's your guess? C. No. It's A. It's A. It's A. It is A. Yeah, A. You're both winners. It's Thank a. you both for playing. Welcome to WVU. <laughs> April, back to you. All right, Shauna, thanks so much. I'm here with Ellen Rodriguez from the LGBTQ Plus Center here on the Morgantown campus. Ellen, thanks so much for being with us tonight. I was talking with Dean Ferris a little earlier this evening, and we were talking about the ways students can get involved, uh, find their purpose while they're here on campus, meet new people, and your center is a great way to do that. Tell me a little bit about the LGBTQ Plus Center. Well, let me say hello to the LGBTQ community. Welcome to WVU. Please come to the LGBTQ Center, check our website, there are so many ways to get involved. Check also Engage, there, are a, there is a list of student organizations. I'm just gonna give a shout out to some organizations. Uh, one of them uh, is Angie Pride, OSTEM, Outlaw, Rainbow International, SHAPE for everyone who is in uh, healthcare, also uh, Speakers Bureau, and also Spectrum. And all these organizations will be at the center also with uh, information for any student who wants to join them. Since we're back a little more in person, where on campus is the center located if people want to find you? Hey, do you know where is the mountain lair? Yeah. So five minutes from the mountain lair, just across the street from Ogilby, uh, next to Dadisman or Stonaker, it's very easy to find. Perfect, and if you want more information, engage.wvu.edu has lots of great information. You can also search the LGBTQ Plus Center and be sure to watch your U News email if you're a student, if you're a faculty or staff member, Mountaineer E News. I know you all share lots of great information about upcoming events and initiatives and projects that are happening at the center, so we'll be sure to look for those as well. Thanks so much for your time this evening, appreciate it. I also need to let our students know if you're here in the state Stadium, go ahead and start making your way up to the seats so that you can get your spot in time for taking our big photo and we are expanding the seating location. You can go through sections 123 to 128 and then we're also adding in section 128 uh, for that extra seating. So sections 123 to 128 students, go ahead, start heading up to find your seat so we can keep things moving for the rest of the evening. Right now, let's send things back down to the field and Jeff Coyle. Well, April, we have a familiar face with us right now. Everybody knows the Mountaineer mascot at West Virginia University. This year, now entering his second year, it's Colson Glover. Colson, I know last year obviously wasn't the year that you initially anticipated having. What are you most looking forward to this year, knowing that you know, we're going to have these fans packed in a couple of weeks? Oh, I'm super excited. 20 days from now, we're going to have the pride of West Virginia back here on the field, the best pregame in all college sports, and then you know just having everyone back in here, 60,000 strong, and enjoying Mountaineer football. You know, that was a nice little segue into what's coming up. We're going to have the Pride of West Virginia do their pregame on the field in just a matter of moments later on in our program. And uh, 20 days, who's counting though, right? Yeah, I definitely am. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we didn't really get a chance to introduce ourselves to Colson last year. Uh, we, of course, you know, didn't get to fill up the stands the way that we're going to this year. So now we want to get to know our Mountaineer mascot a little bit better. So Colson, I'm going to give you kind of rapid fire some of your favorites so we can get to know you better. Let's Sound good? It. Let's do it. All right. First of all, your favorite food. Oh, favorite food. Oh, uh, I'm probably a steak. Favorite food. Steak, medium rare. It's probably me. You got a favorite place to get one? Uh, you know, just about anywhere you go. Um, I was at, you know, Texas Roadhouse a few weeks ago, got a pretty one, good one there. You know, anywhere it's got a good ribeye, I'll be there. Every time I ask you where to get steak, you give me a different answer. So you must like a lot of the uh, possibilities here in town. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. I'm a town here, anywhere you go, I haven't had a bad one yet. All right, favorite TV show? Oh, um, I'm a big office guy, definitely The Office. You got a favorite character? Michael Scott. Michael Scott. I don't, I don't know if, you know, this crew, they may be a little too young. Yeah. Any Michael Scott fans out there? Yeah, right, there, there we go. go. There we go, we got a few. Uh, your favorite kind of music? Oh, um, I'm not picky on music. I, my favorite music kind of goes where the wind goes. So right now I'm on country, but that'll probably change pretty quickly and it'll go to something else. Say you open up your phone right now and you look at your most used emojis, what's gonna pop up? Ooh, most used emojis. Probably right now I'm the uh, emoji with the sunglasses. The cool emoji, that's probably, that's probably me. You are the cool emoji? No, that's the one I use. That's oh, okay, okay, <laughs> nice save. Uh, your favorite GIF to use? Ooh, favorite GIFs. Well, 
So I re recently I have my own Mountaineer GIFs, so I'm super excited about that. So I've been using plenty of those, but probably the surprise one where it's like, yeah, that's the one I use a lot. Very good. And of course, I encourage everybody at home, use those Mountaineer GIFs. They're pretty good ones. Uh, your favorite West Virginia adventure spot? Favorite West Virginia adventure spot. I'm a big Cooper's Rock guy. I love to get there really early in the morning. I've been up there multiple times. Um, actually, before the sun comes up, I'll hike out there and get out there and watch it come up over the rocks, and that's my favorite part. And last one, your favorite building on campus? Uh, favorite building by far is Colson Hall. And why is that? That's because Colson Hall had a little bit of part in naming me. My parents were, they bled gold and blue, and they named me Colson after Colson Hall. My middle name's Morgan. There you go. Better than if we were calling you Woodburn Glover over here. It probably wouldn't have the same ring to it. We appreciate that it was named after Colson Hall instead. Colson, thanks for joining us. Have fun tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, we'll send it back to April. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. And uh, Marjorie Fuller is the director of the Center for Black Culture and Research. And we've been watching students come up into the stands. And a quick little note for all of those students, as you move up into the stands, be sure to take uh, any of the trash refuse that you may have around you. Pick it up, toss it in one of the cans as you're making your way up towards the stands. Leave things nice and clean down there on the field, if you would. That would be a big help to a lot of the staff. Marjorie, thanks for being with us this evening. We've been talking about ways students can get involved on campus, and the Center for Black Culture and Research really offers a lot of great opportunities, and you do a ton of events. Tell us a little bit about the center. Well, the center was founded in 1987 and uh, under um, the uh, E. Moore Hall, mm -hmm. and we moved to our current location in 1990 and that is located at 590 Spruce Street, right across the street from Kappa Kappa Gamma. And the Daily Athenaeum. And the Daily <laughs> Athenaeum. Um, we focus a lot on black culture, history, and experience, but the center is there for everybody because we want the entire campus to understand that we are here for them and that if you have an interest or you need sources or resources, we're there for you. We also do programming. Uh, we did the Welcome Back Barbecue yesterday, and we want to thank all the students that came and supported us and had a great time, and DJ Strizzy, who provided us with music. That was a really great afternoon. And you have an event coming up, by the way. Colson apparently also likes barbecue because I understand the Mountaineer was at the barbecue as well. He was. But you have an event coming up uh, a little bit later this semester, and I know you wanted to make sure people knew about it. Absolutely. We every year do a homecoming tailgate, and it's located in Tent City, right outside the stadium over in the parking lot. And we welcome everybody. It's free and open to the public. We encourage alumni to come if they're on campus and all the students that can come, we say come on over and have a great time with us. And uh, I appreciate your time this evening. If people want more information for the Center for Black Culture and Research, what's the phone number there if they can't get there in person right away? Well, you can reach us at 304-293-7029 or you can email us at Center for Black Culture and Research at mail.wvu.edu. And we're also at cbc.wvu.edu. Marjorie, thank you so much. Now we're sending things back down to the field with Shauna Johnson. April, I'm down here with Jenna from Parkersburg. And MK from Martinsburg. And you guys moved in together and you had known each other for how long at that point? We didn't know each other. You just showed up with your stuff and it's like, hey. Yeah. And how are things going week one? They're going really well. We're really, really well. We're becoming best friends. <laughs> and who are these people behind you? You're on, traveling entourage? Yes. Yeah, there are other roommates. <laughs> they do not want to speak, April, just to be clear. These two are our players for trivia. Second round of trivia. Are you ready to go? I think. Okay. Your first question. What year did the current mountain lair first open on campus? A, 1999. B, 1985. C, 2005, D, 1968. C, 2005. No. No. <laughs> MK. Um, A? No. B. B. <laughs> Wait, what would you say? D? D is the answer, 1968. Half a point, half a point. <laughs> Your next question. Your next question, courtesy of Rachel Johnson, our student worker over there who talked to you for a bit. Woodburn Hall, the clock tower specifically, is said to be haunted. Who or what is doing the haunting? 
Is it A, former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, B, a cow, C, Arthur Borman, the first governor of West Virginia, or D, a very angry lizard? C? Wrong, it is not C. B. It is B, it's a cow. It's a great story about a prank that went wrong, and now there is a cow ghost at Woodburn Hall. That is free knowledge for you. <laughs> Tell your friends at home. Your final question, are you ready? What song is not part of the iconic pregame show for the Pride of West Virginia, the Mountaineer Marching Band, which is the show you're going to see here in a few minutes? Is it A, Country Roads, B, Simple Gifts, C, Hail West Virginia, or D, West Virginia, my home? D. D, West Virginia, my home? Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. You are correct. That is not part of the iconic pregame show. And we have two trivia winners down on the field. April, back to you. All right, Shauna, thank you very much. I am here with Amaya Jernigan and Hunter Moore, the president and vice president of West Virginia University's Student Government Association. First, congratulations to you both. I know it's been a very busy summer and start of the semester. Amaya, I'm gonna start with you. What's it like to be the president of SGA and, and what are your goals for this year? Of course, so um, I'm a little bit busy, <laughs> overwhelmed a little bit, <laughs> but I know that my team is strong, so we're going to make it through this. Um, so just starting off this year, we want to make sure that our students are safe. We want to make sure that they are having that student experience, regardless of COVID-19, and still making that safe, positive um, space while still having fun. And so that's what we're focusing on this year. Hunter, what brought you to SGA? Why did you want to get involved? And what advice do you have for other students who think, well, maybe this is something I'd be interested in? Yeah, that's a great question. It's like uh, Dean Ferris said earlier, we're only in uh, class classrooms for about 18 hours a week. That leaves 160 or 150, excuse me, outside Math. of that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and that's time spent living, working, of course, studying, hopefully, and just hanging out with your friends and being on campus. And I wanted to kind of take an active role in that time outside of class, and that brought, to me, to S brought me to SGA. So, Amaya and Hunter, if people are watching this and they say, you know, I, I think maybe SGA might be for me, I want to get involved, I want to make a difference, I think this is the way I can do that, how do they get involved, how do they contact you, and when and where can they find meetings? Of course. So a great way to get involved without being too overly involved in our organization is the intern program. Um, we are opening the application soon. And um, so basically you will get paired with the mentor and they'll show you the ropes of SGA. Um, you'll be able to experience what, what being an SGA is like without having that full commitment. And so um, you could follow us on our Instagram, our Twitter, even go to our website um, to figure out more information information about when these applications will drop and then our meetings are every Wednesday at 7:30. All right well Hunter and Amaya thank you both so much for being with us this evening. Good luck to you and all of SGA this semester. Have a great year. Let's send it back down to Shauna on the field. April, one more round of trivia as we celebrate our first year students with Sunday Night Lights. This is Henry. Henry from? Bel Air. And? I'm Anne, and I'm from St. Albans, West Virginia. And all of these folks with you, how do you guys know each other? Oh, uh, we all live on the same floor. And what else? Oh, uh, we've sort of just been hanging around with each other for the last week. And it's going well so far because you're still all talking to each other, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, we haven't burned down anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play trivia, Henry. Are we ready? Anne, your first question. What famous pop star's mother was a cheerleader here at WVU? Is it A, Lady Gaga, B, Katy Perry, C, Taylor Swift, or D, Ariana Grande? Who's got an answer? Anybody? Can we phone a friend? No. <laughs> Can you guys help them? Uh, I'm going to guess A. What's your guess? A. A is correct, Lady Gaga, friend of the Northern Panhandle in West Virginia. True story. Question number two, one to zero. 
Where is the WVU Craft Center located? A, Arnold Hall. B, I already knew it. Are you cheating right in front of me? I already knew it, why did you Back to the serious trivia questions. A, Arnold Hall. B, the third floor of Evansdale Crossing. C, the mountain lair. D, the Braxton Tower basement. The answer is D. And you needed support or no, you knew that? Uh, yeah, I know because I have to go down to the mailroom every day. All right, well, there you go. C, learning new things in the first week. I think it's one to one, right? I'm okay, here we go. For the whole ball game. Final question, which WVU alum won a gold medal for the 10 meter air rifle at the 2016 Rio Olympics. A, Jerry West. B, Geno Smith. C, Amy Cashin. D, Jenny Thrasher. Who knows? D. D. You are correct. And we have a winner in Anne from St. Albans. Very well played. Congratulations, guys. Welcome to Morgantown. It's great to have you. April, back to you. All right, Shauna, thanks so much. And that was quite a jacket. I'm here with Tyler Redding. He is uh, head of the Mountaineer Maniacs, and you were eyeing that jacket, and you said to me, that's exactly the kind of thing I would wear. I think you need to get that student as a new recruit. I think so as well. That was a beautiful jacket. So tell me a little bit about the Mountaineer Maniacs, who you are. Uh, you've been around on campus as an organization for a, a, a number of years now. Usually you can find the Maniacs in the section right behind us here at Mountaineer Field. I know you'll be here uh, next month for the first home game. So what are the Maniacs all about? Yeah, so you got right on the head. This is our 22nd year as an organization. Uh, we are the official student section of WVU Athletics and the largest student organization on campus. We typically have anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 members a year. Uh, and we are just, our, our motto is to be the difference. And whether that be that 12th man on the football field or the extra person or the extra, you know, crowd that gets the, the the basketball team hyped to win uh, or in the community to help out you know a lot of community service efforts we're everywhere and uh, we just love being a part of WVU and being something that's bigger than uh, bigger than ourselves. I was volunteering at one of the Ask Us Anything tents earlier this week for Welcome Week and a student stopped by and said I've signed up to be a maniac. You definitely have people who know who you are but for those who maybe aren't familiar yet where can people find information? Yeah, so the best way to find information about the Maniacs is definitely to follow our social media accounts, specifically our Twitter. Um, we do a lot of, we give out a lot of information each and every day there. Um, but from now on, just look for those emails that we send you uh, on social media and just keep an eye out for all those, those, uh, those things that we have coming up because we have a ton of stuff coming up. Ah, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I know you do have a lot of things coming up and one in particular you definitely wanted to share some details about. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so this Tuesday uh, in just a couple days, WVU football, Neil Brown is inviting all of the students at WVU to the stadium again uh, and we're going to have Student Appreciation Day so uh, we're going to have the, the concourse area all filled with games, food, prizes, raffles, all that kind of stuff uh, and then after our little event's over, uh, Coach Brown is going to talk to us and even invite us to watch uh, about an hour of practice. So uh, it's going to be really fun. We're going to be there. Uh, and that's just one, the first of many events that we're going to have this year. All right. Well, Tyler, be sure to follow them on Twitter, the Mountaineer Maniacs, for all the details on that Tuesday event and a lot more this semester. Good luck to you. Thanks for being with us this evening. Now I want to send things back down to the field one more time as students are continuing to make their ways into sections 123 through 128. Jeff, take it away. April, they're all up there. They're listening well tonight. And you know, while the Mountaineer Maniacs are going to have things hyped up in the stands this football season and throughout the year, the cheerleaders will have the action down on the field. Right now, we're joined with the cheerleading squad, including a senior from Pennsylvania, Jenna. Jenna, how excited are you guys to get things uh, rolling this year? We are very excited to be able to spend time together again as a team and to be back on the field to cheer on our Mountaineers this season. And you give us a little preview of what we can expect this year? Of course, we'd love to. Everyone can join in. All right, let's hear it. Oh, it's always great. 
excited to hear the cheerleaders with that chant, let's go Mountaineers. Uh, we're getting ready. We're just a few minutes away now from the start of our Monday Night Lights event on Sunday night here at Mile and Pushkar Stadium Mountaineer Field. I want to thank everybody for joining us for this live pre-show stream. I know we have a lot of parents watching this evening. If you're not already a part of our Mountaineer Parents Club, I would invite you to join the Parents Club. There is a lot of great information, resources that you can find there, and they have a great Facebook page that you can follow. So just look for the Mountaineer Parents Club. For all of our students, whether you're a first-time student here with us tonight, or you're a returning student, a graduate student, or a student who uh, is, is, is from afar, be sure you follow students.wvu.edu on your web browser. Look for your student UNews email for all kinds of information uh, each week about events, activities, important announcements, and updates from the university. And for all of our wonderful faculty and staff, a quick reminder about enews.wvu.edu. Think of it as your electronic billboard in the break room. It has lots of great information for you as well. And look in your inbox in your email email every day for your Mountaineer e-news at around 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning it should get there. So lots of ways to stay in touch with what's happening at West Virginia University whether it's our Morgantown campus or one of our regional campuses. So we're well underway with this semester. We hope it's a, a safe one, a productive one, and most of all a happy one. With that in mind, in just a couple of minutes, Mr. Bill Nevin is going to take over the microphone here at Milan Pushkar Stadium and take us through the rest of our big event this evening. For Jeff, for Shauna Johnson, and myself, thanks so much for joining us for the live pre-show. Have a wonderful evening, and let's go, Mountaineers.
so clean, they come wait to bash me. I must be getting too flashy. Y'all shouldn't have let it work past me. It's too late, cause I'm here to stay, and these girls know that I'm nasty. I sent it back to a boyfriend with my hand print on her and she City talking, we taking notes. Tell him all to keep making posts. Wish he could, but he can't get close. OG so proud of me that he chose to why he making toast. I'm the type that you can't control. Sad what did I make it so? I don't clear up rumors. Where's y'all sense of humor? I'm done making jokes. Cause they got old like baby boomers. Turn my head is to consumers. I make friends feel like they juniors. Say your time is coming soon. But just like Oklahoma. Mine is coming sooner. I'm just a late bloomer. I done peak in high school. I'm still out here getting cuter. All these social networks and computers. Got these pussies walking around like they're the losers. I told you. Good evening, class of 2025. From all of us at West Virginia University, we welcome you to Milan Pushkar Stadium, home to Sunday Night Lights. Tonight, you'll learn what it means to be a Mountaineer. You'll hear from a few of our leaders, listen and watch as our pride of West Virginia performs. And you'll come together for your one-of-a-kind class photo. Welcome to Almost Heaven. Let's get started. This is the start of a journey. This is the start of a journey. Not a return to what was, but an opportunity to grow, innovate, change our world for the better. Each step we take, we do it with purpose, with pride, with passion. Simple moments we once took for granted will take on a whole new meaning. Footsteps on a crowded campus, laughter inside a classroom, the smell of a tailgate, the sounds of game day. And this is just the beginning of your expedition. We're persistent as always. Our ambition moves us forward. If we fall, we rise again. Because a valley can't exist without a mountain. And we are mountaineers. We were made to climb. So up we go. Adventuring higher, further, where others fear to tread. So take chances. Break boundaries and barriers. Wander into the great unknown. Make memories. Be you, always. Push to the top, and when you make it, never forget to look down on all you have conquered along the way. Life is precious. Opportunities are golden. These years ahead will change you. Your journey has taken you here, to this moment. A mountaineer in almost heaven. Here. Here 
is where you're meant to be. Home at last. The last 18 months have been some of the most difficult we've faced. Today, however, is the start of a new year and a new path. We're glad to be with you along the way. Now, please help me welcome to the podium the 24th president of West Virginia University, President E. Gordon Gee. So, you have persevered. You have seen everything you possibly can in terms of uh, challenges, and now here you are. And we cannot tell you how grateful we are to have you here. This is going to be a wonderful year. Let's make it that, okay? Let's make certain you uh, take care of yourself. Let's make certain you have fun. Let's make certain you go to class. And let's make certain, most importantly, that you know that you're here to make a difference in the world. So I love and appreciate every one of you. Let's have a great night, okay? Thank you, Dr. Gee. Now please welcome to the podium our Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Misha Poor. Let's go! Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna need y'all to be a little bit louder <laughs> because it's like 4,000 of y'all, so I know you got it. Let's go deep. Let's go to your diaphragm. We gonna try one more time. Y'all gonna try it? Y'all ready? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Oh, I love that. Now that's all right. That's all right. Well, welcome to the Mountaineer family. This is your legacy. It starts today. Well, actually, I can say it started on the 18th when you went to class. I hope that your first week was good, and I hope you are preparing for an amazing semester, a beautiful year, and we are happy to have you on this campus. Give yourself a round of applause. Now, I'm not gonna be here long because you got a lot of other wonderful people who are gonna talk to you, but let me say this. As a Mountaineer, there's a few things I need you to remember. Mountaineers always go first. That means they go first into the classroom to be curious about what they're learning in the classroom and what they're learning around this campus and this community. It's your responsibility. Look to the person beside you, say, not yours. Look to the person on the other side, not yours, but mine, to make sure I'm curious about all the things that are on this campus and available to you. Oh, y'all don't have to keep repeating after me, but I love it if you do. <laughs> it's also your responsibility to appreciate one another. When I came in, how many of you all have those little yellow smiley faces I gave you? Yeah? All right. Now that is, of course, also duplicates of the stress ball, but we're not going to talk about that. The reality is I want you to share love, appreciation for one another, no matter where you're from, no matter what state you're from, no matter what county you're from, no matter what country you are from, it is your responsibility to be appreciative of every mountaineer on this campus. We are only stronger if we stand together, right? It's also important that you not only appreciate one another and that you're curious about what's happening in the classroom and outside the classroom, but that you respect each other. You respect what happens to this campus. You respect how you are out in the community. You are a reflection of us. So on your social media pages, you reflect this institution. Remember that. Respect yourself, respect each other. Service. That's another one of our values. Service to one another, caring for one another, caring for this state, caring for this campus. If you go and do some international traveling when that opportunity is presented to you, you are to care and serve the community in which you're in when you go there. And so we've talked about curiosity, we talked about appreciation, we talked about respect, we talked about service. Those are four of the values. We have one more value. Accountability. 
Now, I had you all look at your neighbors and tell them that's not about you, it's not your responsibility, it's my responsibility. But when we talk about this family, the Mountaineer family, all of us are accountable to one another. How you treat your roommate, how you treat the person in the cafeteria, how you treat our faculty, how you treat our service workers, how you treat your, your friends. You have to be accountable for your behavior. But most importantly, I need you to always be able to say, let's go! Thank you, Vice President Poor. And now, please look to the video board for a welcome from your provost, Mary Ann Reed. Welcome to campus, class of 2025. It is so wonderful to see all of you. My name is Mary Ann Reed, and I am the provost and vice president of academic affairs at WVU. My office is responsible for overseeing all of the academic programming and academic support services provided to students. You won't see a lot of me, but know that my team and I will be behind the scenes making sure that you have the best academic experience possible. We are absolutely thrilled that you have chosen to make WVU your home away from home for the next four years. This is truly a great place where you will find your passion, make friends for life, and find a good job when you graduate if you apply yourself. More on that in a bit. We know that last year was tough on you. You missed out on having a typical senior year in high school. And while we can't replace everything you've missed, we hope to restore some of that experience to you, for you, by creating new traditions like Monday Night Lights and the freshman class photo. I'm also pleased that we are able to offer you a more normal classroom experience with most of our classes being offered in, in person, in real time, and in an actual classroom environment. You are going to love our talented and dedicated faculty and instructors. As you begin the new year, I have a couple of words of wisdom to share with you. First of all, pace yourself. There will be many temptations this year to have fun outside of the classroom, but remember to keep on top of your studies and keep focused on your goals and dreams so that you don't become overwhelmed and fall behind. If you do get in trouble, ask for help immediately. Our faculty and staff and our resident hall assistants are here for you. They care about your success and your health and welfare, and they will give you access or guide you to the support services you need, whether it be academic tutoring or mental health counseling or financial aid. This is a big university and you can get lost. That is if you don't raise your hand and say, I need help. Be smart. We are still dealing with COVID and the Delta variant, and you need to protect yourself and others by making smart decisions. Being able to have a regular college experience is dependent on everyone doing the right thing. And finally, be nice to yourself and each other. WVU is a caring, welcoming community, and we treat each other with kindness and respect. You will meet people who may look different than you, come from different cultures, or who may share different beliefs. Have an open mind and an open heart. And finally, have fun. On behalf of our entire Mountaineer family, I welcome you to WVU, and I hope that you have a fabulous school year. Thank you. Thank you, Provost Reed. One of our university's most cherished traditions is our beloved mascot, the Mountaineer. Since 1934, WVU has had 67 Mountaineers to help us celebrate our most cherished memories. Through the Mountaineer, we are reminded of the strength, courage, perseverance, and friendliness of the people of West Virginia. Tonight, we welcome the 67th Mountaineer mascot, Colson Glover to share his journey and some of our favorite traditions. Class of 2025, thank you so much for being here. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Colson Glover. And I'm the Mountaineer mascot here at West Virginia University. I know I've met some of you already, but I can't wait to get, all, get to know all of you throughout this next semester. Whether it may be at a sporting event on campus, some form of social event, or whatever it may be. I want to start out by thanking everyone who played a part in making tonight happen. 
Monday Night Lights was by far my favorite part of Welcome Week, and I am so glad that you all not only get to experience this, but do so in dry and beautiful weather. Here in a few moments, you're all going to be down here on the field together, singing Country Roads, arm in arm in the state outline, meeting together as a class fully for the last time until you graduate here in four years. Before I get into what I really want to talk about, how was this first week, guys? Guys, I know how challenging your junior and senior years of high school must have been. I know some of you might have missed out on prom or homecoming. Some of you missed out on your senior season. Some of you even missed out on walking during graduation. Well, I can promise you one thing. You're not missing out on the best college, spirit, ex college experience in this country, and that's right here at WVU. Now, as I stand up here, almost a year and a half since this pandemic first started, I can't tell you how great it feels to say these three words. We are back. In literally 20 days, 60,000 fans are going to be sitting in this very stadium cheering on the Mountaineers. In under three months, we're going to be rolling out the carpet in the Coliseum with 14,000 fans. We're already playing soccer in Dick DeLesque, where our women are currently number 12 in the country. All of these great traditions you've been hearing about, like homecoming, Mountaineer Week, the PRT cram, singing country roads, and riding the PRT are all back. And I can promise you that your academic, social, and full college experience is going to be the best that WVU can offer. Now I'm going to keep this short and sweet because we have two awesome coaches coming up here behind me. But I thought I'd leave you with this. When I was first applying to WVU, I saw these two words everywhere I looked. And those words were go first. On billboards, t-shirts, posters, literally everywhere. Now I always thought, that's a pretty cool slogan. But it wasn't until I got older and became the Mountaineer that I truly thought about what it actually meant. As Mountaineers, we climb mountains. We never back down from a challenge. This pandemic reminded us of that. We push ourselves and each other to go further. When everyone else turns back, we keep going. So in your next four years, challenge yourself to be that next Olympian, be that next Rhodes Scholar, or whatever it may be. Because as Mountaineers, we always go first. Class of 2025, thank you so much again for being here. Best of luck in your freshman year. Take advantage and enjoy every opportunity because I promise you, it goes by way too quick. Be safe, have fun, and as always, let's go Mountaineers. Now you see, we have a little bit of a problem. You see, I promised Coach Brown that here in 20 days, this was gonna be the best atmosphere that he's seen yet. Now the problem with that is, some of you all don't know these cheers to make this the best atmosphere in all college sports. Now this first one, I know you already know it, but this has got to be the loudest one yet. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! There we go, one down. Now number two, it's a rendition of that one. And if you know that one, you know this one too. Let's do it with me. Let's go, Mountaineers! Let's go, Mountaineers! Let's go, Mountaineers! One more time! Let's go, Mountaineers! There we go, yeah, and y'all know this, let's go! Now we got one last one we gotta learn. Now this one requires a little bit of help. Now this evening, we are very fortunate to have the best PA announcer in all of college sports with us, and that is Mr. Bill Nevin. Mr. Nevin, are you here? I'm ready. Let's do it. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is the first down chant. Now, we're going to be doing this a lot of times this year, okay? So we got to have this one down pat. It goes like this. As soon as we get a first down, we're going to do spirit fingers and go, oh. And when Mr. Nevin says first down West Virginia, we go WVU, clap, and then we're going to go this way for today. Y'all think we can do that? All right. Letty Brown, just a 15-yard rush, one of many. 
All right, we got a first down. Let's get him up. First down, West Virginia. WVU. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad for your first time. Here's the problem. We're not leaving until we master it, though. So we got to try this one more time, okay? We think we can do that? We're going this way, remember. All right. This time it's a 50-yard rush. Lady Brown, let's get him up. First down, West Virginia. WVU. There we go. Thank you so much. Let's go, Mountaineers. Thank you, Colson. You'll see him at many of our home athletic events this fall, cheering on the Mountaineers. Now, please welcome to the podium one of the most successful coaches in college basketball history, WVU men's basketball coach, Bob Huggins. It's a great act to follow, isn't it? Let me let me tell you a little bit about a little bit about why I feel so uh, the, the love for this state and this university goes so deep. I was born here in Morgantown. I was born at Vince Quadi Hospital, which is now I think a nursing home. Um, I think that's probably where I'll end up. But um, <laughs> You know, you, you know what's crazy about it. I know you guys know what it is, where it is, because it's right catty corner from the little general that sells the most beer in the state. That's where it is. If you're looking for a frame of reference, look for the little general, right there, and then look catty corner over. It's right there on the corner. I almost died there. I came down. I was, I was. Uh, no, I did. I did for real. I was. I was uh, working out to go try out for the Philadelphia 76ers, and I'm, I, I rode the bike up the hill. I pushed it most of the way up the hill, but got up the hill, and I'm coming down, and some lady turned in front of me, and I went through the windshield and uh, tore up my knee and my shoulder and my elbow and a whole bunch of other things, which, which reminds me. Let, me. let me tell you how cruel the world is. So I'm hurt but I'm trying to play. So I go to Philadelphia 76ers and, and there's about 30 of us there and, and guys get cut and I get to stay. And then the next day guys get cut and I get to stay. Well, the end of the, at the end there were three of us left. There was the number one pick in the draft, the number two pick in the draft and me. Number one pick was a guy from, uh, from Arizona, six foot 11. Uh, second pick was a guy, Herman Harris, was from Arizona, Arizona State. He was the second leading scorer in the country, and me. And then the real guys came in. I don't know if y'all probably too young to remember guys like Dr. J, uh, World Be Free, all those guys. But they were they were the greatest players in the world at that time. And and I'm I'm kind of honored to be there. And and uh, so they closed down a the practice. They said we'll tell you who made it, who didn't make it. So we go, in the, we go in the locker room, the two guys, number one pick, number two pick, and me. And the good guys are in another locker. Their locker's really nice. You know, ours is those, those uh, steel lockers and things. And so that the, uh, we wait and we wait and we wait, and pretty soon a trainer comes in. His name was Al Domenico. They called him the Fonz because he looked like Henry Winkler. And he walked in and he said, Ewans want to know who made it or who didn't make it. Well, these, I know I didn't make it. So these other two guys jump up. Just tell us who made it, man. Just tell us who made it. He said, none of you MFers, and ran out. And they're looking at each other. They're kind of laughing because he was a joke. He never came back. That's how we got cut. None of you MFers. I'm telling you, it's a cruel world. So you got to be prepared. You know, you got to be prepared. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to say that I've got, I've got two, deg two degrees from this great institution, graduated magna cum laude, and it's served me very, very well. I've coached, I was trying to figure it out, I think it's 43 years now, 
43 years I started my coaching career here at WVU. 43 years as a head coach. I'm blessed and honored to be able to coach in the most recognizable building in the state of West Virginia. The Coliseum, without a question, is the most recognizable building in the state of West Virginia. Somebody said to Capitol one day, I, I, I think he'd been drinking a lot the night before. Uh, because everybody knows the Coliseum and everybody knows at least one of those three guys that are hanging up there, one of the greatest players to ever play in Jerry West. And those are the people that I can remember sitting on. I grew up in Doug Hill. You all know where Doug Hill is? I got one hand. Um, Doug, Doug Hill's up to holla, uh, as they say. It's suburban Saberton. Uh, if you all familiar with, with, with Saberton, it's, it's suburban Saberton. But I grew up up to holla, played Little League Baseball here. Uh, so I've, I've been here, for, I've been here for, for quite a while, quite a while. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and blessed to be able to be here. I was just, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of, when I get done speaking, I just wonder, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing that people can't, that, that, that people can't um, yawn and boo at the same time, you know, it's, it's hard to do. So it's, I'm blessed, I'm blessed that you can't yawn and, and boo at the same time. All I, all I want to tell you is this is, this is, uh, I came, I came back here, um, I came back here with, with uh, the idea that we were going to do something special. Uh, Y'all need to stop over, see the practice facility. It's, it's one of a kind that, that we were able to build. Um, we're, we're heading in the right direction. I, I think most of you know we, we played in a Final Four. Our best player, uh, Deshaun Butler, got hurt uh, early in the game against uh, the Dukies. So we're, we're gonna make another run at it and uh, wanna, wanna take y'all with us. So listen, I'll tell you what, if you don't have fun here, you can't have fun. I'm, I, I'm telling you now, and I, yeah, that's right. It's, it's like I told you when I started, I have two degrees, uh, two degrees from here and graduated magna cum laude and i don't know if there was ever anyone who had more fun than i did at this great university so enjoy let's hear it for coach huggins see you later this fall coach in the coliseum now, please welcome to the podium the head coach of the Mountaineer football program, Neil Brown. So I only have 850 fewer wins than, than Coach Huggins. So I brought my son Dax so as a prop. You know what I mean? Like, he's got 900 wins. I've got Dax. So, um, <laughs> they got a... Uh... Y'all are kind of in the same boat. He started kindergarten last week, and y'all started freshman year in college. So, um, I'll, t I'll say this, and I'm going to be short, but what a time to be alive. Most of you are 18, 19 years old starting uh, an entire journey. And what I would really put in front of you is, is a couple things. Is number one, make memories. And I hope some of your best memories are right here at Mountaineer Field. I hope they're in the Coliseum. I, I strongly encourage you, game days, whether it's basketball, football, we went to women's soccer today. They had a tremendous atmosphere. I encourage you to be involved. Be involved. We've got, on Tuesday night, we're going to have our last practice of fall camp. And it's open to all students. It's student appreciation night. That's going to kick off at 7 o'clock. We've got free food for the first 500. There's prizes. There's going to be opportunities for 
you ought to come compete against our players right here on Mountaineer Field. So I, so I encourage you to, to come and join us on uh, Tuesday night. Um, I want to introduce, these are our freshmen, true freshman football players. Uh, give them a hand and welcome them. They're one of you. Several of them are going to play big roles for us this, this fall, and if not this fall, definitely in the future. And uh, so we're excited about them, and I wanted them to be here tonight to join you right here on the field when we take the picture. So uh, they're looking forward to that. September 11th. September 11th is our first home football game. We're going to kick off at 5 o'clock. I hope all 4,000-plus of you are right over there being as loud as you possibly can, and, and I, look forward to, I look forward to putting on a really good show with our guys. Uh, we, our guys are excited. We've had the, the best fall camp that we've had since I've been here. Uh, we're looking forward to kicking off the season, and I hope you all will come check us out. I really do. Our guys put a lot of work in it, and uh, they're ready to celebrate and sing Country Roads, which is the best tradition in all of college athletics after a win, singing Country Roads. We look forward to singing it with you all. Appreciate it. Have a great freshman year, and best of luck to everyone. Thank you, Coach Brown. See you back here in a few weeks for our home opener. And now we're pleased to present to you one of West Virginia University's and the state's most revered traditions our very own marching band, the Pride of West Virginia. Tonight, they'll perform their pregame show for you. And now, from the College of Creative Arts, on the campus of West Virginia University, under the direction of Dr. Sheldon Williams, we are proud to present the award-winning Pride of West Virginia, the Mountaineer Marching Band. The pride is under the field direction of Evan Ballard from Foster, West Virginia. Kat Gatton from Morgantown, West Virginia. Joshua Shepard from Hava de Grace, Maryland. And Michaela Wood from Wellsburg, West Virginia. The feature twirlers are Emily Cooper from Annapolis, Maryland. Kristen Cox from Sutton, West Virginia. Alexis Kiesling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Caitlin McGregor from Birmingham, Alabama.
And now, would you please stand for the singing of the alma mater of West Virginia University, and please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Tonight, the alma mater will be conducted by Dr. Sheldon Williams, director of the Pride of West Virginia. The National Anthem will be conducted this evening by Dr. Scott Tobias, Director of Bands at West Virginia University. Now will you please join us as we honor America.
As the band concludes its pregame show, we'd like to invite you to join us in the Let's Go Mountaineers cheer when the band inverts the state formation. And now, here is Hail West Virginia. The pride of West Virginia, the Mountaineer Marching Band. <laughs> Students, be sure to get to your seats at least 20 minutes before the kickoff of each home football game so you can cheer on the band. It's an experience you won't want to miss. And now it's time for another tradition, the 2025 Class photo at West Virginia University. Please stay in your seats until the marching band is in position and forms the shape of the state of West Virginia. At this time, please put on a mask and make sure it is properly worn above your nose. A mask is required this year for our class photo due to COVID-19 and the Delta variant. If you don't have a mask with you, a volunteer will be at the bottom of the stairs to hand you one, and another volunteer will ensure you are wearing it properly before entering the state formation. Thank you for helping to keep your fellow Mountaineers as safe as possible while still being able to enjoy one of our university's great traditions. Students, please stay in the stands. It'll just be a moment waiting for the band to make the state formation.
Now, students sitting in sections 123, 124, and 125 may use the field entrances in front of you and to your left to return to the field. Students sitting in sections 126, 127, and 128 may use the field entrances in front of you and to your right to return to the field. Eastern Panhandle, Martinsburg. How about a nice big wave? You're looking good down there. There we go. Northern Panhandle, filling up as well.
You'll be able to download your class photo at welcomeweek.wbu.edu slash photos. Again, the URL, welcomeweek.wbu.edu slash photos. And if you're taking photos tonight, make sure to tag them on social media with at West Virginia U. At West Virginia U. North Central West Virginia, the Morgantown area, filling in nicely, looking good. Hey you, the one in the gold shirt down there, move to the left one step, please. Check out the video board. It's coming together nicely. Still plenty of room in southern West Virginia, central West Virginia as well. Everybody's going to have to squeeze a little tighter. We've got a lot of students left to fit in the state. 
Move together a little closer, please. Thank you. Students, you'll be able to download your class photo at the following URL, welcomeweek.wbu.edu slash photos. That's welcomeweek.wbu.edu slash photos. And if you're taking photos tonight and putting them on social media, make sure to tag them with at West Virginia U, at West Virginia U. We're almost there. A few more students to fit in the state. Plenty of room still in southern West Virginia. Please uh, squeeze in if you can, a little tighter. Make room for the students who've yet to enter the state. Thank you. If you're standing in the north central part of the state, in the Morgantown area, squeeze together a little more, please. Thank you.
Students inside the state, if you could take a step toward the northern part of the state, everybody kind of take a step toward the northern part of the state, that would help us out to squeeze more students in in the southern part. Thank you. Y'all are doing great. Just a few more students to squeeze in and we'll be ready for the picture. Looking real good, just a few more students to go. Hang with us. Band members, go to low, please. Band members, go to low. Thank you. All right, nobody should be on anybody else's shoulders. That's a no-no. Everybody on their own two feet, please. Okay, we're all on the field. Now, everyone, look up at the press box. 
Do you see Brian on the top of the press box? Wave for us, Brian. So I need everyone to look up at Brian. And on the count of three, we'll take our first picture. One, two, three. Great work. On the next count, say, let's go Mountaineers. Ready? One, two, three. That was almost perfect. Let's try it again. Ready? One, two, three. Much better. Much better. On the next count, wave to the camera. Ready? One, two, three. Beautiful. All right. Don't move. Please turn to your right and face the screen as we finish with one of the most iconic traditions in the country, singing Country Roads. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama. my memories gather round her minus lady stranger to blue water dark and dusty painted on the sky missed a taste of moonshine teardrops in my eyes country road take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. I hear her voice in the morning hour as she calls me, the radio reminds me of my home. Great job, everybody. All right, students, please wait in place while the, Mar while the Mountaineer Marching Band exits the stadium.
That concludes the official program of Sunday Night Lights. It's now time to pick up your official class T-shirt, a pepperoni roll, and flying WB cookie right outside the stadium. Thanks to our sponsor, Coca-Cola, you can also grab a bottled water before you head back home. You'll exit out through the tunnel you entered. Keep an eye out for our volunteers to show you the way. If you arrived on a bus, you can return to the downtown area of campus on buses after picking up your t-shirt and snacks. Those who walk to the stadium will be able to walk back with the assistance from officers from our university police department. Please be careful as you exit the stadium and be safe as you travel home. Have a wonderful evening and of course, good luck this semester. Let's go Mountaineers.